What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 94 and we start today's episode off with a game against Atletico Madrid here in the Europa League semi-final second leg. So one of the biggest games of the season and the series really so far as we take on the Spanish, well Spanish champions in real life right now. How they've been doing in the game I don't know but uh, we take on the Spanish side regardless. Of course we drew 0-0 away in Madrid which meant we had no away goals coming into this tie and of course that was the same in Roma when we came out to the Hawthorns we had no away goals and that meant that if the away side scored just once we would have to score twice and if they scored twice we'd have to score three times and so on and so forth so I didn't really know how to feel about approaching this game as you can see I did go with a flat 4-4-2 which has been information I usually use however I was thinking about doing a 4-5-1 and crowding out the midfield but I thought to myself you know attack is the best form of defense it's a bit of a clear but you know football is won by scoring goals football's won football matches are won by scoring goals so I thought I will go with a flat 4-4-2 start with my strongest side and have Niang and Lacazette out top together and the first chance would fall to us in the 14th minute and it was Niang who did go through there really good chance but the shot went just wide the post however it took a deflection we won ourselves a corner Kevin Savanier crosses the ball in goes for Andre Carrillo the goalkeeper punches the ball away and a Zambrano shoots the goalkeeper's on the floor but it's blocked by Godin and turned away for another corner so straight from the off the intentions were clear get us a goal and let's really put the sword to a flat come Madrid but their defending was really dogged it was so determined they couldn't let us go through but as you'll see here in the 18th minute as Henderson makes a great challenge here he slides the ball through the legs of his defender plays it through towards Niang who Berber spins around Godin then a quick little roulette to get himself inside and I was absolutely livid because I was so pumped in that game and when Niang went down there off the ball challenge there was no contact there's no contact with the ball just a man that should have been a penalty but it wasn't given and in the end thankfully it wasn't given because directly from that as the Fletcher Madrid got the ball away only temporarily we went down the left hand side with Kevin Savanier he drills in across he picks out his French colleague Niang and it's Mbai Niang who makes it 1-0 20 minutes in and the Hawthorns is jumping because that was a brilliant ball in by Savanier waits and waits and waits then picks him out in the centre and Niang keeps his composure to open the scoring here at the Hawthorns so 1-0 to West Bromwich Albion fantastic finish there and I'm very pleased to go up early on. But in the 28th minute, Fleck Madrid come forward themselves here. And Kirchi almost equalises for them and scores that all-important away goal. Thankfully for us, the header went just wide the post. And from that, they grew strength. They had another great chance a couple minutes later. But Ben Foster had to make a very good save to keep it at 1-0 to us. But a couple minutes later, we went on the attack ourselves. And it was a really open game in the first half. Ricardo Rodriguez takes on Gomez, beats him here. Uh, drills in across to the far post. And Niang's header is off target and behind. So still 1-0, but a fantastic fantastic first half it really was it was one of those games of FIFA where you genuinely enjoy playing it against the AI on legendary you don't say that very often because both teams were attacking so openly and just with real fast pace and intent and in the end it paid dividends for us because in the 38th minute it was another goal for West Bromwich Albion and who got it it's Mbai Niang getting another goal to his fantastic tally and his fantastic record since signing for us at the start of last season Rodriguez crossing the ball in from the left hand side he out jumps his man in the centre. It's a really brave header but it hits the back of the net. That's all that matters and he makes it West Brom 2 Atletico Madrid 0. So fantastic finish by Niang there. And in the 42nd minute, Lacazette is through here. And this just completed an absolutely wonderful first half. And each of you scored a really good chip during this season against Liverpool. I think this one is even better. What a ball it was through the middle. Lacazette takes one touch just outside the area, spots Jan Black off his line and lobs him with a brilliant finish. Absolutely superb chip by, the, uh, by Lacazette, sorry, there. And it is West Bromwich Albion 3, Atletico Madrid 0. And it was a big game. It was a, you know, a really, really really big tie for us really and we needed to step up we needed those big players to perform and you know to be 3-0 up against one of the best sides in Spain and to be honest Europe as well considering how well they did in the Champions League last year of course getting to the final and you know being only seconds away from winning the thing as well you know it was obviously a really good result for us as things stood and Ricardo Rodriguez almost made it 4-0 with the last kick of the half his uh, free kick going just wide the post and five minutes after the restart there was no letting off in the pressure Mauricio hit the bar from a corner so you can see we started the second half just as bright 
Riley is the first. Kept on attacking, but Atletico Madrid did have a chance themselves in the 72nd minute, but as the game was uh, was coming to its close, the clock was running down, they didn't really have much chance of scoring three late goals in 20 minutes, and as Gabby's shot was saved by Foster there, they had another chance eight minutes later. Arda Turan down the left-hand side, crosses the ball in towards Kirchi, he wins the header, and Foster turns the ball away for a corner, and it was how the game would finish as well, a 3-0 victory, and an absolutely fantastic night at Hawthorns. Without doubt, one of the best performances we've had here with West Bromwich Albion, uh, the, the team, you know, and that's that's saying something as well. We had some brilliant performances here. When you think about Arsenal's 4-0 victory, the, the six goals we put past Hull at the start of this season, or I think last season, actually thinking about it. But, um, you know, we've had some fantastic results, but that's definitely up there. Brilliant, brilliant game. Fantastic win. Thoroughly deserved it as well. It wasn't a scrape through by one or two goals. We thoroughly deserved to, to get ourselves through with a convincing victory. 3-0 the final score, and we will be taking on Lille in the final. Uh, the reason it's Lille and not Monaco is because of those away goals. So, it'll be a West Bromwich Albion versus Lille final uh, in the Europa League final. So, England versus France. Uh, that will be in episode number 90 and that is going to be uploaded on Saturday evening so just trying to think through my mind when it will be yeah I'll be up on Saturday evening uh, Saturday will be a double header of career mode and yeah that will be um, that will be uploaded on Saturday evening it will of course be a live commentary Q&A so look forward to that and um, yeah it should be uh, should be really good fun so hopefully you enjoy that but uh, still we take on QPR for the second and final game of today's episode here and it's the London side travel to take us on here at the Hawthorns as you saw by the table we are currently still top of the table with just a few games to go and it's all about handling the pressure now we know that Chelsea are breathing down our necks and they are so close to catching up with us but we need to keep on winning because Chelsea are a side who rarely ever slip up in career modes you know they rarely ever do you know it's teams like Spurs and Arsenal United City in particular always seem to have you know a few months of bad form here and there uh, you know a couple of seasons out and in but with Chelsea they're always in form it's so annoying but uh, still we take on QPR for the second game of today's episode. In the sixth minute, we had the first chance. Some very nice passing release. Kyle Walker, who crossed the ball in. And Saido Berahino opens the scoring as well. He played a 1-2 with the post after his header struck the woodwork. And it came straight back to him. And Berahino makes it 1-0. So, very cool finish from Berahino after the ball came back to him. No pressure. Just puts it into the empty net. And makes it West Brom 1, QPR 0. So, the perfect start, really. And a bit of a tense game for us after that Atletico Madrid win. Not really knowing what to expect. Making quite a few changes just for fitness reasons, but very good uh, finish by Berahino, and it is 1-0 to us. And in the 36th minute, Gomez is on the ball for QPR. He slides it through towards Charlie Austin, and the former Swindon man almost makes it 1-1. So good chance there, but thankfully his shot goes wide. But really, it was quite a poor game. Nothing like the Atletico Madrid one, and there wasn't really many chances in the first half. And in the second half here, in the 56th minute, you'll see QPR on the ball. And as they pass the ball around here, they, re they retain possession. Charlie Austin chips it inside, and Matt Phillips, Matty Phillips, scores the goal here to make it West Brom 1, QPR 1. The former Blackpool winger getting the goal. The uh, Scottish international, despite being born in England, gets the header. And when I watched this back, I was like... How on earth did my six foot six giant of a centre back Yannick Vestergaard not win the header there? Because I know Matt Phillips is what six foot six foot one maybe, but even so, you know Vestergaard, you got to win that. He basically just got pushed to the floor, and it's one one, and QPR are back on level terms. And a few minutes later, if it wasn't for a great save by Foster, QPR would have been two one up because it's a good save by uh, by Foster to Nai Gomez, and it's still one one. But from the corner, it's Traore who crosses the ball in towards Fowling here. Foster comes, punches the ball away well, but as it comes to Young Suk Young the Korean, he finds Fowlin, he finds Gomez, Gomez finds Fowlin, and he strikes the ball past Ben Foster, and makes it West Bromwich Albion 1, QPR 2, and in the space of just a few minutes, we not only surrendered our lead, but also surrendered our chances of getting a point in this game, because QPR are in front for the first time, I think Foster should have done better really, it was straight at him, and it just went through his body, and it is 2-1, but as the game was being closed out here, it was still 2-1 to QPR, and I just couldn't get myself back in the game, I struggled to break them down really, and string passes together, but as Niang finds Wellington still down the left-hand side, he stops the ball to fake Rabana, or tries to, passes the ball instead to Niang, and Niang, who come off the bench, makes it West Bromwich Albion 2, QPR 2, and you'll see him in the bottom right, come off the bench there. It's this this guy, man, seriously, he's just such a, an important player in this team, and you guys have seen me have some very, very wealthy bids coming in for him, and some very exciting ones of like 20, 30 million, but the reason I want to keep him here is because he's not only growing very well, and he's been out 
top goal scorer the past two years, but he's such a big time player. You know, he really is. He always seems to come alive when we need him most. He got us a point there. He bailed us out of the game. It's still not a good result. I'm still disappointed about it, obviously, but it's a point gained, not two points lost. Staying positive. That's what you got to do if you want to win the title. And I'm thankful that Niang did come off the bench and rescue us at least a point, if nothing else, from that game. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like because, of course, that is much appreciated and it really, really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode tomorrow morning and the Europa League final tomorrow evening.